Well, the truth is, it's caught my attention all along. Since I was a little kid, I was thinking about the waveness of things. And I was a photographer trying to show the waves of light and whatnot. But I didn't know the, um, the underlying theory yet. And, and so now it's become clear. And it's a lovely process when you have a feeling about something and you can't quite describe it. Uh, but suddenly it becomes clearer and you realize in retrospect that all along this is what you were trying to do and now I feel I've sort of retrieved my own creative energy in a different way my what I always wanted to do was talk about waves and now I finally can and it's been a, a long process of, of, of finding just the right way to do it and so I think I'm going to do a lot more of this and uh, I'm very comfortable with, with the result and I'm also going to look at waves in different places like uh, with apps and with uh, uh, talking with scientists more about the specifics of, of, of the math behind it all and I want to learn more and more about waves. We can have, sometimes the waves push us and sometimes we have to push the waves and uh, when we push the waves, we take action in the world and we make things go differently. And sometimes we just look around and watch and see all the fullness of the world as it is and we can just say thank you to the world because it's so beautiful and colorful. And so these are the kinds of things that I hope people would see in this project. They will see both the hard lines of things really uh, turning uh, from light to dark very quickly, but also the softer lines of uh, gradients and subtle waves changing things and interacting with each other and uh, producing thesis, antithesis, and then a synthesis from when things come together. Uh, one part that's important about this project is that you can never quite uh, see it all at once. You always see part of it, you always miss half, and uh, of course that talks about attention and how uh, attention is political. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, what do we pay attention to? Do we pay attention to uh, an app on our screen or to some game or do we pay attention to the politics of the day and to the people we interact with and all these things are political questions. Is Where do you put your money? Where do you put your attention? Where do you put your effort? And uh, uh, every little action we take as humans, kind of like a little wave, can uh, contribute to the way the world works and uh, uh, there's no wave that is too small not to change the world. Uh, you never know, even a small change sometimes has tremendous consequences. That's because of the principles of chaos and wave synthesis and how everything affects everything else. So here you see a fairly complex patterns emerging uh, from simple forms and sometimes they get so complex that they just look like noise and when they do that it's hard to make things out and uh, so this project is all about clarity and confusion and overload and how clarity confusion and overload are are things we we have to balance ourselves so here we have a beautiful almost uh, uh, abstract pattern but it's hard to make out any shapes and sometimes the shapes are very clear but uh, uh, too simplified and so uh, when do we need the simple shapes? When, when does it need to really be this complex for it to be, to be what it is? Those are the kinds of questions we can contemplate in this project. So, superliminal, more than you can perceive. It's all over and uh, there's more than you can perceive. We start with the white frame and the uh, gray frame and they come around and then they come back together and when they do, they produce new, new colors and new shapes. What do zebra stripes, fingerprints, and galleries have in common? Actually, it should go the other way. What do fingerprints, zebra stripes, and galaxies have in common? Well, they're all uh, patterns that are the result of waves inter interacting with each other. So you have um, a uh, black wave and a white wave, and they collide. And when the black wave dominates, you get a black stripe. When the white wave dominates, you get a white stripe. And because the waves are slightly different frequencies and angles, you get that kind of noisy pattern. Uh, the same thing is true for finger uh, prints. They are simply ridges that are high or low and they're oriented in a certain way. So if you imagine one wave describing the orientation of the ridge and another wave describing the height of the ridge, you put those two w waves together, you get a fingerprint. A spiral is also the result of uh, um, two frequencies uh, and uh, so the spiral shape is, can also be described as a collision of two waves. And uh, the amazing thing is that 
similar rules apply at different scales. So it's almost like a fractal pattern of the world. Um, uh, it's self-similar, the smallest things we know, the, 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 the atoms, the cells, the molecules, DNA, for example, is also a double helix, is also um, a, a two-wave kind of design. And uh, so from the smallest to the largest, there are certain rules that apply and that seem to be generating the forms that we know of in the world. Some people standing in this room feel uh, overwhelmed, some feel calmed down, but a lot of them want to come back and see a little bit more of it. And I think it's because the rules that drive the motions are all Fibonacci rules. And so they seem kind of, even though it's all abstract and artificial, it seems kind of natural and beautiful, kind of like being on a, on a, on a, on a beach on a sunny day or uh, strolling, strolling across a field. It feels, it feels okay. And, uh, and so it's artificial at the same time. It reminds us of, of natural principles. This is a wave that comes and cleans off all the stuff that isn't red or blue or yellow or green. And it sort of uh, polarizes the colors a little bit. And, it, uh, and here again, there's another layer of polarization, turns it into a kind of a cathedral look or maybe a, a galactic look of a galactic ba background radiation. And the whole point is that even something as complex as the galaxy emerges from very simple patterns. And uh, once uh, we're done thinking about that, we have dark matter arriving. And the dark matter is a mystery that we can't peek into yet, but maybe we can with another project. So that's another thing to work on.